This is Mr. Almers with the uh, final test review for the 2D geometry. We're looking at circumference, circles, area, and angle concepts. So the uh, finding area of the trapezoid, we're going to start with the uh, trapezoid area formula. Pick it up on your formula chart. So we're going to add base 1 plus base 2, divide by 2, and multiply by the height. So the bases are going to be perpendicular to each other, parallel and perpendicular. So we're just going to fill in the formula. 4 plus 18. And then the height is going to be perpendicular. That's times 7. Just processing the formula, order of operations, we're going to add inside the parentheses. That's going to give us 22 times 7. And half means dividing by 2. We can divide 22 divided by 2. That's going to give us 11. So 7 times 11 is for the solve. So number 2, we have a parallelogram. For the parallelogram, you're going to need the base and the perpendicular height to find the area. And it's just going to be base times height. 4 times 6 for the solve. So number three, determine the hypotenuse of the right triangle. So for the hypotenuse, we are going to use the formula a squared plus b squared equals c squared. For a right triangle, we can determine the missing side length by squaring the two other sides and then comparing to the third side length. So we have 20 squared plus 48 squared, which is equal to c squared. So 20 squared is going to be 400. And 48 squared, 8 times 8 is 64. 8 times 4 is 32, plus 6, 38. 4 times 8 is 32. 4 times 4 is 16, plus 3. Okay, I'm just going to double check the work there. So 48 squared should give us 2304. And we add this up. So 2304, that's equal to C squared. I'm going to put these two together. So 400 plus 300, we've got 2704. We need the square root of that to get the value of C. Now, if you're not sure which answer to go with, with the multiple choice, you can square one of these to see if it equals 2704. So 50 squared, 52 squared, 62 squared, or 58 squared. You could probably eliminate that one. It's not going to give you an answer. So square these and see which one equals 2704 for your answer. Okay, next one, we're plotting a couple points. I believe the graph is off by one, but let's just use the graph for this. And within the blueprint, it says each blueprint unit, each unit is 20 yards. So we're going to find this would be negative 2, 4, and then 5, negative 3. So we're going to go over 5, down 3. So that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. We got seven units here, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven units here. So we're going to square those two to find out what is the length of C. Yeah, seven squared plus seven squared, which is equal to whatever the hypotenuse is squared. Forty-nine plus forty-nine. So it's going to be 98 is equal to c squared 
We're going to do the square root of both sides. 98 is very close to 100. So we can estimate 9.9 .9 squared should be pretty close to 98. So we're going to use C equals 9. Now recall up here it says each unit is 20 yards. So we're going to do 9.9 .9 is the length. And then multiply that by 20 to convert this to yards. Got a rectangle with the dimension. Find the diagonal. Yeah. 55 and 95, and it's asking for the diagonal length. We're going to use the Pythagorean theorem to help us solve for the diagonal. So we got 55 squared plus 95 squared, which is equal to c squared. So I'll give you a moment to multiply that out. 55 times 55, 95 times 95. That's going to be 3,025 and then 9,025, which is equal to C squared. So you put all of this together, we get 12,050. And we're looking for the square root of 12,050. Now it's a very large number, so let's estimate here, just looking at the square root of this, we're going to look at maybe the first three digits. So this is close to 12,000. And if we squared 121 or we squared 100, 121, no, uh, 11, my bad. That's the, the upper number that we're looking at. So the square 121, and that's going to be the square of 11 and 100. All right, that's what we're doing. So we can estimate that 120, 120 is between 100 and 121. So since 120 is very close to 11, so we could do this as 10.9. As the square root for an estimation. So we're going to check that. So 10.9 squared is going to give us 111 or 118. So it's really close. Now that was an estimation, and we uh, took away two decimal place values from the full number. So the square root of a hundred, which would be two decimal place values, would be 10. So we're going to move that decimal place value back over. So a safe estimate, this should be right around 109 or 109.9. Uh, number six. In the diagram, we got a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. Uh, this is 3 squared plus 4 squared, which is equal to c squared. Uh, don't get confused by the diagonals or the squares turned sideways. So use the Pythagorean theorem to help you solve. Which best describes pi? So any circle, if we take the diameter, and we divide the circumference by the diameter, that's going to equal pi. That's our proportional value for any circle. So per circumference divided by diameter is how we calculate pi originally. Once we calculate pi, now we can use it for finding area and circumference. The diameter of a bicycle tire is two feet, revolves, means circumference, so it's going around and around and around. So we're going to use circumference is equal to pi 
times the diameter. Circumference is equal to 3.14 times 2. Uh, estimation, uh, let's see, multiplying, so that's going to be 6.28. And we're going to multiply that by revolutions to find the total distance. What's the difference in areas between the two push pins? So the difference in area, so we're going to use the area formula for a circle, which is pi, and the pi multiplied by the radius squared will give us area. We have 3 and 4 is the diameter. So we have 3.14 times 2 squared. And call area L is the large circle and then area S for the small circle. If the diameter is 4, then the radius is 2. So we divide the diameter by 2. And so this one, the diameter divided by 2 is going to give us 1.5. So the area of the small circle is equal to 3.14 times 1.5 squared. Now instead of multiplying by 3.14, what we could do is square this. So that's going to give us 4 and then square 1.5. Yeah, 1.5 times 1.5. So that's going to give us 2.25. So we're going to take that out and then put in 2.25. Now, since both of these are being multiplied by 3.14, we could actually subtract the square of these numbers first and then multiply by 3.14 since they're being multiplied by the same thing. So we got 4 minus 2.25. So ultimately, the solve is going to be 1.75 times 3.14. All right, for the last question, we're going to find the area of the shaded region. Well, we need area 1, area circle 1, and the area of circle 2. And call that the larger circle. And then find the difference between the two. So first, we need pi times r squared to find the area. So here is r. So 3.14 times 4 squared, and then pi times r squared, 3.14. So if this smaller circle is 4, and then the larger circle is 2, uh, it's 2 more, that's going to be a total of 6. Since both of them are multiplying by 3.14, and we need to find the difference, we can actually square these. Move this. So that's 16, and 6 times 6 is 36. So instead of multiplying all that and then subtracting, we can subtract and then multiply by 3.14. So... 36 minus 16 is going to give us 20. So the difference in area is 3.14 times 20.